Welcome back. So, how do we actually do this? Let's start. Patients are placed on their lateral recumbency on an examination table. Ideally, this table is designed to be over a sink to facilitate drainage of the fluids during the procedure. You may choose which side you want to do first, if it's the left or the right. When a patient is placed on its right lateral recumbency, like in this picture of a dog, you will be cleaning the buccal side of the left-sided teeth and the palatal side of the right-sided teeth. After you are done with those, the animal is disconnected from the anesthesia machine and the monitoring machines and then flipped to its left lateral recumbency to complete the dental prophylaxis. Anesthetic monitoring devices are connected to the patient with heating devices to prevent hypothermia. One important thing to do is to elevate the caudal part of the patient's body to let the fluids flow out of the mouth simply by gravity. To be sure, the pharyngeal area is also packed with gauze sponges to prevent any fluid from getting into the lungs. This is done carefully to prevent dislodging the endotracheal tube. A dental prophylaxis procedure relatively lasts for only 10 to 20 minutes max, the moment that patient is positioned on the table. The step-by-step -step procedure is outlined as supragingival scaling, subgingival scaling, polishing, irrigation, and fluoride treatment. Let's discuss this one by one. We start with supragingival scaling, which is the gross removal of the plaque and calculus from the crown surfaces. This helps remove the bacterial colonies anchoring to the calculus. Make sure that the endotracheal tube is secured well to prevent dislodging during prophylaxis. Remember, you will be handling the mouth and the head of the animal during this procedure, so make sure that your tubes are secured. Make sure the pharynx is packed with gauze sponges to prevent aspiration pneumonia. Make sure to, to spray or lavage the oral cavity with a diluted chlorhexidine solution or a diluted, very diluted povidone iodine to at least decrease the level of contamination. For you, make sure to wear your protective attire like masks and gloves during such a procedure because ultrasonic scalers cause immediate contamination of its environment with bacteria-laden water droplets. Supragingival scaling is accomplished with a combination of power equipment followed by hand scaling. Hand scaling using your manual scalers can be very effective, but it is fatiguing and time-consuming when it is used as the sole method of calculus removal. Gross calculus deposits are removed using the tartar removal forceps, avoiding damage to the gingiva all, all the time. In using an ultrasonic dental scaler, you must use only the side of the scaler tip. Honestly, sometimes I need to use the tip itself for the smaller crevices in between the teeth, but when you choose to do it, you must be very careful because this can cause injury to the gums. You may even use the ultrasonic scalers subgingivally by inserting the tip with the unit inactivated or turned off, then turning it on again as the tip is withdrawn from the pocket. It was found as well that when Pressing the ultrasonic scaler to the teeth during scaling. Ooh, sorry. Dental pressure is preferred because pressing the scaler too hard into the teeth surface only decreases its vibration and scaling capacity. Gently stroking the tooth with the side of the instrument tip is best. And the tip must not be pressed firmly against the tooth surface 
are kept in contact with the same area for more than 15 seconds per tooth. Well, personally, I don't scale more than 5 seconds per surface, just to be sure. Because this activity generates heat in the instrument and the tooth itself, water spray is essential. The manual curettes with fine tips as seen in this image are usually saved for subgingival cleaning and for the lateral surfaces of the teeth. After removing the plaque, the calculus, and dead tissue above the gingival margin, we now proceed of doing the same thing below the gingival margin. All debris must be removed to prevent progression of the periodontal disease, and this process is said to be the most important part of dental prophylaxis in dogs and cats. According to the dental guidelines published by the American Association, of animal hospitals. During subgingival scaling, we do the periodontal probing. Since now the teeth are now exposed and their gingival margins are quite clear without no calcul calculus deposition, we can now easily do the periodontal probe. This is the problem as well with the non-anesthetic dentistry. In non-anesthetic dentistry, or those doing dental cleaning in an awake patient, you can only do supra-gingival scaling. You cannot remove any debris, any plaque or calculus within the gums because the patient is conscious. Because of that, you may seem that you solve the problem because the teeth look good. They're white, the calculus are gone. However, the main cause of the problem is still within those gingiva. So your disease is continuously progressing and progressing until it goes back to you with a much more severe periodontal disease because you failed to diagnose it properly and you are not able to provide the correct treatment. This video demonstrates both supragingival and subgingival dental scaling. Don't want to be on each tooth for too long. You don't want to heat it up, but there's cold water coming out and cooling down the tooth and the instrument. Removing all, removing all of the calculus. I'll come back to that. I've been on it long enough. These are quite clean, these ones, because the owner is doing such a wonderful job. There's not a lot of tartar. Most dogs that I'm doing have way more. This is an ultrasonic scaler, removing all of the tartar from the tooth. I'm doing it above the gum line. I'm just doing the crown right now. I'll come back later and do underneath the gum line. So. The gauze at the back is to stop any tartar chunks going down and into the lungs through the trachea, the back of the mouth. I've had a look at the x-rays and what looks like we've got a stage one periodontal disease. This is when you really want to be doing this. Okay, now I'm going to go under the gum line and I'm going to clean the pockets. It's called the sulcus because it's normal. but. I'm going to take away all of the tartar from underneath the gum line with this ultrasonic scaler. There's a vibration at the tip of this ultrasonic scaler and it gets very very hot so it's important for it to get cooled by the water and this is distilled water so it's very clean we don't use tap water
So as you can see, after ultrasonic scaling, we actually have quite a bit of bleeding. Even though this dog has had fabulous home care, we've still got some bleeding. We've still got some uh, gingivitis. And so it's a good thing to be cleaning these teeth at this point. After dental cleaning, polishing is done to remove small defects and irregularities which may have occurred. This is done with a slow speed rotary dental hand piece with a flor fluoridated profi paste up to the level of the cemento animal junction. The disposable prof profi rubber cup is gently pressed on all the visible tooth surface as seen here. And to avoid thermal damage, be sure not to polish any single surface for more than 15 seconds at a time. A sealant can be placed after polishing, which is said to decrease plaque accumulation. Let's watch this video and watch how polishing can be done. This is uh, polishing the teeth after scaling just to smooth out any grooves that were left in the teeth from the scaling. So the bacteria can grow in the grooves and you don't smooth it out. And then we're going to put on a little fluoride. Ooh, looks like they have rabies. <laughs> oh, she's coming. Irrigation is the flushing of the oral cavity either with distilled water, a 0.1 to 0.2% chlorhexidine solution or saline to remove diseased tissue, plaque, calculi, and now polishing we're using paste a combination from the silicon and water the gingival and air pockets. To clean and rinse the mouth. This can also be done at this during moment, scaling we take the opportunity to, to the check under the tongue you are around the gums, deep in the, the throat procedure. for tumors and other lesions in the mouth. Fluoride treatment is done after polishing. This is believed to strengthen the animal and help decrease the sensitivity associated with exposed dentin and or root surface. When doing this process, make sure now the gauze sponges packed on the pharyngeal the area teeth, are intact to prevent the fluoride treatment from being swallowed because it foam. can cause the gastric irritation. The fluoride is allowed irritation. to soak into the surfaces of the teeth. Then we apply a sealant. We first dry the mouth and the teeth and then we apply a thin film of the sealant onto the surfaces of the teeth. We spread it with our fingers. Again, the sealant helps to add an extra barrier on the teeth. It creates a smoother surface on the And you're done. Antibiotics are always indicated after any surgical procedure. Now a single administration long-acting antibiotic, for example Convenia, is preferred to short-acting because some animals are hesitant to eat after dental prophylaxis and surgery. So it might be a challenge for the client to give it antibiotic twice a day or three times a day. Post-operative analgesia is a vital part of your protocol, so do not forget about that. Usually, it is prescribed for three to five days. Imagine if you are not given a prescription after your wisdom tooth is removed. Painful, right? I have included a comprehensive reading assignment about pain and dental surgery, so make sure to read about that. You must establish a clear communication line to your clients before, during, and after a dental procedure. During a dental procedure, you must update them of any changes that could be brought about by sudden discovery of um, a more severe problem. For example, you suddenly need, 
you suddenly need to extract more tea than you told the owner. So that needs to be communicated to the client. Also, post-operative inappetence is normal and the client needs to understand that to manage their expectations. You also need to assess the level of compliance of a client especially since periodontal disease can be prevented with regular dental care and dental checkups with their veterinarian. Personal scheduling of rechecks of patients help in, compli in client compliance. For those patients whose teeth are extracted, it is advised that they come back after one month for assessment. For routine dental care, six months is the recommended interval of dental workups. This is the last lecture video for this chapter. I chose to only discuss dental prophylaxis because it is the most common oral procedure in the clinics. Again, the ebook Small Animal Surgery by Theresa Welsh Fossum is in our Google Drive for your reading needs in case you want to read more about oral surgeries. I will end this chapter again with video assignments. To see how to prepare and how to perform a routine dental prophylaxis, watch these videos. Have fun, compile your questions, send them to me, and see you in the next chapter.